Well, praise the Lord tonight, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord tonight, everybody. Can you guys lift up a shout to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lord tonight? Anybody here thankful for the blood tonight? Oh, come on, we want to thank God for that cleansing blood, that saving blood, the blood that made us whole, the blood that brought us out. Thank God for the blood tonight. Come on, let's sing about the blood.
thank God for the blood. Oh, Father, we thank you for the blood. Oh, that you shed for us. Oh, we thank you that that blood still has power. Oh, that blood still has power. Healing power. Healing power. Thank you for the blood. Come on and just thank him for the blood. Thank you for the blood. Oh, we thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood. For it reaches to the highest mountain. Oh, I'm talking about the blood tonight. Oh, it flows to the lowest valley. Oh, oh, the blood that gives me strength.
on, let me say that again. Are you thankful for the blood? Come on, Jesus died on the cross. And the blood that he shed, man, that was for us. Come on, that was for you. The, the fact that you're here right now. Come on, that's the blood of Jesus. Come on, let's sing that, oh, the blood. And oh, the blood of Jesus. Come on, sing it out. And oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, There's healing. There's healing in the blood of Jesus. Oh, there's healing. There's healing in the blood of Jesus. It washes. It washes. Come on, there's healing. There's healing in the blood of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the blood. We thank you for the power, the healing, the victory this day. We thank you for the future, the destiny this day. All in the blood of Jesus. We thank you for it all. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to find five and a half people and tell them that you are thankful for the blood of Jesus. Praise God. We want to welcome everybody to the Tuesday night edition of Winter Bible Seminar Homecoming 2023. We're glad for all of you that are here. We're also glad for all of you that are watching online, um, wherever you might be, from our various different online sources. Um, you can watch us online on YouTube at the Rama USA app you know, or on Facebook Live at the Kenneth Hagin Ministries page or um, rhema.tv, or on the Rama USA app on your phone. So there's a, many different ways. I al always encourage everyone, whether you're here, whether you're watching in India, wherever you might be, take a service selfie and um, tag 
Rama Bible Church or tag, actually, our hashtag this week is um, Rama WBS, all right? Rama WBS is the hashtag. And so just go ahead and do that. Also, um, if you are here and you haven't registered yet, you can do that in the West Lobby. That's the lobby over there. The way you know you're registered is when you look on your front of your chest here and see if you have a badge. If you have one, you're probably registered. If you don't have one, you either left yours somewhere else or you didn't register. And so, um, but please, if you can, if you can register, um, the big reason we want to register, we, we want to know how many people showed up. It's also, it's good for us, good for the city to know how many people are attending um, in Winter Bible Seminar. And so, um, like I said, it is good to have each and every one of you. I do want to remind you once again, um, we are Oklahoma's largest daycare in this building. So from, um, from the East Lobby all the way through there um, in the morning time from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., um, that's, that's um, closed off. All right, there'll be some stanchions in there not to go past them or anything like that. And also you can't park, well, you can park in the East Lobby, but you're gonna have to walk around the building. This is a big building, you don't wanna do that. So, plus tomorrow it might be raining too. So, you know, you need to make sure that you park somewhere else. Um, do you wanna let, let you know once again that every single service is being recorded for your benefit? Um, so a single copy of a CD is $5, DVDs are $8. If you want a single copy, you can purchase them in the bookstore one at a time. If you want the complete set, you can go to the North Lobby and you can order the complete set of 21 CDs, 21 DVDs, 21 MP3s. They come on a USB drive and you can stop by there. there. And I do want to let you know, because some people say, well, they want the complete set, but they want to pick it up early because they're leaving early. Um, I just want to let you know, if you're leaving early, the complete set's not finished yet, all right? Um, I mean, I, it happens every year, all right? You know, yeah, I want the complete set, but I want to pick it up on Thursday. Well, then you don't have the complete set. You have an incomplete set. We'll sell you an incomplete set for the same price if you want it. So, you know, um, all right. Alumni, I actually, well, Army, I members, we have one announcement I want to make for that is um, Thursday afternoon, we have a RMAI um, um, luncheon. So all RMAI members and their spouses are invited to attend on Thursday immediately following the morning service. And so tickets are available for purchase until 7 p.m. tomorrow night out in the West Lobby. So let you know about that. Also, um, if you have a ministry or a bookstore, or um, if you're a travel minister and want to carry some, some of our books with you on your meetings, you can um, get a wholesale discount. All Faith Library publications, books, CDs, and DVDs are available for a wholesale discount for your, your ministry or business, so you can open a wholesale account. Um, during Winter Bible Seminar, you'll receive a 55% discount, and the wholesale booth is located in the North Lobby, so if you want to set up a wholesale um, account, you can do that. Also, I do want to let you know is that we have a lot of people want to know, you know, that they don't actually um, buy real books anymore. They buy eBooks, and hopefully they don't lose them on their, on their device, like my mom did. Um, no. We have approximately 190 eBooks for sale um, on the various different eBook sources, Amazon, Apple, Barnes & Noble. So if you're looking for um, electronic books, you can, you can go there and download it there as well. Also, we have the Rama Correspondence Bible School, and um, that's different than Rama Bible Training College, all right? Um, that's like a layman course, and um, basically we have, um, you read a book, you take a test, um, and we have a, a lot of actually, um, a lot of prisoners are taking the Correspondence Bible School course. Um, I actually worked for a while grading Correspondent school tests, and so like you know, people probably never never thought that I was the one grading their their tests. But anyway, you can go to rama.org/rcbs to enroll, or you can stop by the booth in the West Lobby um, for that. And then um, something many people have been telling us: Hey, we don't even have a CD player anymore. All right, my car doesn't actually have a CD player um, in it anymore, and so. I know some of you are saying, well, we still listen to cassettes, but you know, you guys are weird and that's okay. Um, but 
But, you know, we sell a lot of CDs. And if you don't have a CD player anymore, there's a place called Walmart right down the road. They do sell CD players. In fact, I saw a cool thing at Walmart the other day. I shop at Walmart quite a bit. Um, I just do. Anyway, so, um, but they have a cool thing at Walmart where they actually have this little box that has a cassette player, a CD player, and a record player all on, on that one box. Um, so anyway, but, but our, um, we do have MP3s available for, for our, for 197 singles, um, series consists of 120, 626 individual teachings. And so if you want an MP3 of any of our teachings, you can go to rhema.org slash store and you can buy an MP3. All right. So a lot of people, um, you know, like that's probably the number one thing we have because we, most people don't have CD players anymore, which sounds really kind of crazy because I remember when CDs came out. In fact, I remember, I mean, it seemed like three years ago, people were asking for cassettes still. So I don't know. Um, all right. Let me talk about Rama Bible Training College. So, amen. Um, Rama Bible Training College is now accepting applications for our September intake. And you can actually go to rbtc.org. That's rbtc.org. If you'll go there, you can give us your name, your email, and your phone number, and we'll email you a digital packet immediately, and then we'll have one of our student ambassadors give you a call and talk to you about Rainbow Bible Training College. But for those of you that are already here, um, we have a booth in the West Lobby and the North Lobby. The West Lobby is the one over there. North Lobby is out there. We have our RBTC booth, and if you'll stop by there, whether you're a graduate, whether you're a student, whether you just don't know what you are, um, we have a free gift for anyone who wants to stop by the booth, all right? And so everyone's encouraged to stop by and um, we have a free gift, but alumni, you are the best, um, you know, word of mouth is, is still the best advertisement. And if you're an alumni from Rainbow Bible Training College, then you're a great advertisement. And so um, if you have a church or a ministry, we will set you up and, and give you some material that you can pass out, um, you know, either at your church or whatever, um, because, you know, Rainbow is such a great place. We want more people to attend. Amen. And so, and it doesn't matter whether you're 18 or 83. There's, you know, actually it does seem that, that this year um, we have a number of folks that tend to be older at Rama. Now, older means like my age, okay? So it doesn't mean old. Um, I know. I don't want to call myself old. I, actually, I found out the, uh, whenever, so the first day of class, um, I always, I have all the first year students and I always take a survey to see how old everybody is and, and things like that. And so I found out, so what I kind of do is, is, you know, I have everybody stand up and then, then if, you know, if you're 60 year older, sit down, blah, blah, blah. So I always get to, you know, my age, I'm, I'm 53. So I said, I said, if you're, if you're, um, you know, 54 or older, sit down and say, congratulations, you're older than the teacher. But anyway, um, and so I found out that people aren't old, they're more mature. All right. So we have some more mature students. But th the point is, you're, you're never too old to come learn about the Bible. You know, at Rama, actually, you know, we, we have people who come just want to learn more about the Bible. And then we have some people that, that know they're called to, to, to the ministry. And then we have some people that want to come learn more about the Bible. And while they're there, they get called in the ministry. Or maybe they're called, they just didn't know they were called before they showed up. All right. But um, Rainbow Ball Training College is a wonderful place. And in fact, um, this week um, at 8.30 and 9.30, if you want to forego the, the services here, you can attend one of the classes. And so if you want to check out Rama for yourself. And then um, tomorrow after the morning service, they're having a special um, meeting where they're going to talk to you more about Rama for those who are interested in um and, and um, coming. And I'm sure that each and every person here knows someone who needs to be at Rama. I mean, you know, you know, someone that needs to train for the ministry and, and pastors, I know sometimes pastors don't want to get rid of, I don't want to get, they, they don't want some of their congregation members coming. Now there are some people that they want to get rid of and they're glad to send them. Um, but there are some, some faithful volunteers that are like, man, I don't really want them to come. Right. But I tell you what, man, you know, 
it, it, it's great. I mean, I, I, here at Rama, we're a giving church. We, 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 we give people all, all around the world. And, you know, and whether they come back or not, you know, it, it doesn't matter, you know, as long as they follow God's plan for their life. That's the most important part. And I always encourage, um, you know, um, Rhema grad pastors, you know, first of all, our tuition at Rhema, we, we've actually checked out all our so-called competitors, if you want to call it that. And we are the most affordable Bible college in the nation. I mean, our tuition for the whole year is $3,050. That includes your books. That includes all your fees. That includes everything. Now, I want to give a shout out to the Word Partner Club because the Word Partner Club is what helps us keep our tuition low. And if you're a Raymond graduate, you should be a member of the Word Partner Club, um, you know, because you, they're the ones that keep our tuition low. And, and um, actually, um, well, I'll, let me talk about this. And I'll talk about one other thing. Um, we have a college weekend coming up, April the 14th to the 16th. You can sign up um, today at the Raymond booth um, if you want to or talk to some of you, some people you know, and you need, maybe you need to bring somebody. Um, but if you're a pastor, I encourage you, if you if you can afford it, or if you can, I mean, it's $3,050. I mean, I know a lot of them, pastors, that they'll, they'll give a scholarship. I know some pastors give a scholarship to anybody that wants to come to Rhema from their church. But, but if, even if you can't, can't afford a scholarship, the first Rhema payment is like $1,100, and so, you know, if you could help them with that first $1,100, I mean, it's just, just an awesome thing to do. Now, speaking of, of raiment, if you, if you go around the, um, the different places, you're going to see some other colleges um, advertising. What these other colleges are, they actually give credits for raiment graduates. Um, and, and so if you want to get your degree you know, your real degree or whatever, you know. Now, Brother Hagen says, you know, if you want to get your real degree, you, you just go out there and do that and then come on into Raymond and, and learn how to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Um, but, um, you know, if, if you would like your bachelor degree or, or, or whatever, a lot of these other colleges, they offer um, programs. Um, in fact, well, some colleges give like 30 hours, but how, how much does um, Grand Canyon, how many hours do they do? Huh? Yeah, if you go three years to Rama, and let me say, talk to you know, you Rama alumni. You, a lot of you just went two years. Um, majority of our students now go three years, and so most of you Rama alumni, the second year, you actually picked your you know pastors, teachers, whatever. And um, and it was, it's so interesting because you see these students; they think if they pick the wrong group, you know, then they're going to be doomed for the rest of their life or whatever. <laughs> you know. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. In fact, we have a lot of successful pastors that actually went in the helps group. Now, a lot of people go in the helps group because they don't want to have to preach or they don't want to do anything. Um, I'm not I don't do anything, but they don't want to. The biggest thing, you know, is that lab class. But so now what most students do is they take general ministry for two years. In the third year, they actually choose pastors, teachers, whatever, or they choose biblical studies. And if you choose biblical studies, that means in three years, you'll study every single book of the Bible. And so, um, but if you go three years to Rama, um, Grand Canyon University will give you 59 hours. Now, if you go to Grand Canyon um, .edu or whatever their website is, I guarantee you their credit hours are a whole lot more expensive than our credit hours. In fact, one of the cheapest ways to get a bachelor's degree is come to Rama. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, if you're a parent and you have a kid that's going to co co college, is not cheap. All right, if you want to, if you want to save money, send them to Rama for um for three years, and then they can go to college. Um, one of the colleges that take our things. Now there are some colleges that actually do offer a dual enrollment. I, I believe them, Southwestern um, Assembly God College from Waxhatchee, Texas, where where Dad went. Um, he actually graduated at ORU, but but he went there three years, I guess, right? Um, three and a half years. And so, um, so, and they actually, I will say, they actually have a campus. They have, have some classes here at Raymond, a night school or um, in the evening. But I mean, you can go there while you're going to Raymond. And it's, a, it's, it's the cheaper way um, to go to college. And I tell you, now, my mom was a stickler for college. I actually asked if I could just go to Raymond 
You know, and I did graduate in 1993 from Rain, but it's my 30th year um, reunion tomorrow, tomorrow, which makes me old. Um, I mean, because I remember when I was a kid and my dad played, um, you know, 30 and over basketball, I thought, man, those guys are old. I've actually been out of Rama for 30 years, so I'm really old. Um, but I actually, you know, asked, and my mom told me that I need to go to college and get a degree so I can really help them at the ministry. I have a degree in accounting. I'm not sure why, but anyway. Um, but um, so um, but nowadays, I mean, these colleges are 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 crazy. I mean, you know, I mean, some of these secular colleges. Um, some of the, their, some of the, they're, they're messed up thinking. Even, even some of the secular college or some of the colleges that have Christian in their name are not too Christian. All right. Now, thank God there's some revival in some of the colleges going on. That's pretty awesome. All right. But those aren't the ones I'm talking about, but some of the other ones are pretty crazy. But any, anyway, Rainbow Training College, rbtc.org. Um, great place to go. And then we, we have campus tours, um, going on, um, starting today all the way through Friday after the morning service, and you can take a tour of our campus. All right, tomorrow, tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m., um, Reverend Karen Jensen Salisbury will be ministering tomorrow at 8.30, all right? And then um, at 9.30 will be our dean, um, um, Tad Gregers, will be ministering at 9.30. And then tomorrow morning will be my sister, Denise Hagen Burns, will be ministering tomorrow morning. And um. Tomorrow night, it's going to be me. And so, um, you know, if you know someone who, and, and I will be praying for the sick as well. So if you know, know someone who's sick, I mean, you know, go around your neighborhood. If you're in a hotel, you know, knock on the doors next door, ask people if they're sick. And if they're sick, bring them. Um, amen. So we, we want to see people healed. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to show you a few things that we have out at the book and gift store. First of all, um, these are peepers. All right. Um, now, these are reading glasses um, that we have out there when they're a little fancy or whatever. I, I don't know. Actually, it's interesting because I, I have to pull my glasses off to read. So, um, but anyway, I, I don't need reading glasses. I need to be able to see far away. Um, when I figured that out one time, was, um, I, was, I couldn't see people in the back row, so I figured I need glasses. Oh, all right. For you people who have re really good eyesight but want to be cool, <laughs> so so I mean, but they are. Pla I mean, so they don't have anything in them. They don't even have like like clear glass like yours. Okay, so they have clear glass, right? You said there's nothing in them. All right. So what it is? It's clear. It, it's just a clear glass. So, all right. So so you can be cool. And not have to wear glasses. I mean, you know, but here's the thing. People who don't wear glasses want to wear glasses. And people who wear glasses don't want to wear glasses. And I'm, you know, saying, well, yeah, you could get contacts. I tried getting contacts. I mean, I scratched this cornea, I scratched that cornea, and it was terrible. Um, you know, so I don't wear contacts. Um, anyway, we have peepers. All right. And then um, we have... I guess you call it the faith journal is what you call it. For some of you that want to take notes, um, you know, faith journal, or maybe you just want to doodle in, in, you know, in church or whatever. So it's a little, little faith notebook out there. And then um, this is my grandfather's um, CD entitled Healing Scriptures, and we actually have it available on MP3. Actually, we have it available in a book form as well. But on, on this um, a little CD, there's a few words of instruction, and... Um, then he, he just reads healing scriptures. And, and um, we have some background music playing, you know, soothing music. And we have heard so many testimonies of people that just put this on and play it, you know, just on, on repeat. Because, you know, one way you can get the word in you is, is hear healing scriptures. And so even while you're sleeping, you could be hearing these healing scriptures. And, you know, it's, it's kind of like, there's been times I've woken up and I've had the TV on all night long, and, um, and I, I don't know, I kind of remember what they were saying in, in the middle of the night. Um, but, but, I mean, it'll get into you. And in fact, um, we actually, there, there was one testimony that we got. Um, there was um, 
a gentleman who was in the ICU at a particular hospital, and um, someone got one of these healing scripture CDs and played it, and um, the guy walked out of the hospital. I mean, you know, just completely healed. And so some of the nurses happened to be Christians. They asked if they could have the CD, and they, they were going to pipe it in anyone's room that wanted it in that ICU, um, you know, because they, they saw, the, you know, the, the power um, in, you know, just hearing the word. And then um, this is my dad's, I think this came out at camp meeting, I believe. This, this is um, a four CD series called The Master Restorer. God will do it again. And so it, it came out uh, at camp meeting time. Be a blessing to you. And this is... Um, my sister's um, CD, it's a great message for, for anyone. It's called Generational Unity in a Divided World. It, you know, the world we live in is so divided in many different ways. I mean, you know, I, I hear it all the time, people griping about the millennials and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, the millennials are probably griping about you, so it doesn't matter. Um, but in, anyway, you know, we need to learn to be able to live together, to worship together, you know, because a, a healthy church has people from every generation, you know, and it is interesting because sometimes it seems some of these churches, they try to cater to one generation and they forget about everybody else. All right. But I mean, you know, if you just have a church of young people or a church of old people, either way, it's not good, not healthy. We should have a church, we should have, you know, a church of, of you know, many generations. And, and um, it's a great message, talks about the different generations and different things. And, um, well, I'll talk about this first. And I'll talk. This is my mom's um, book entitled Talk to Me, Connecting with the Heart of God. Amen. So it'll be a blessing to you. And then this is a book that everybody needs. Um, great stocking stuffer, great birthday gift. You know, you know, that one person that says, you know, hey, bring me something back from Tulsa. Um, my book entitled don't be stupid all right i think we also have available in the cd um you know actually it says feel like you're stuck with no way out this actually i never planned for this to be a book that we produced um i actually um i i, I teach a group called synergy on tuesday night and i did a series about um the prodigal son and i talked about the influences that the prodigal son had that caused him to lose all his money and end up in a pig pen, you know, or we, I called it a stupid place, you know. Um, but you know what? No matter where you are, no matter what you've done, God still loves you, and you you never can be a servant. You'll always be a son. And it's called Don't Be Stupid. And I found out that, that this is very popular in prisons. Um, so a lot of the prison ministers are saying very popular because a lot of us make stupid choices. Some of us make stupid choices every day, but, um, you know, anyway, don't be stupid. It's a great book. And then, um, what is this? Miss Mouth, Messy Eating Stain Treater. Oh, all right. So, so th this is like a stain remover for like my shirt. Um, yeah. So unfortunately me and my, I mean, I am a lot like my grandfather. In fact, I, I don't know if I've ever ate with my grandfather. He didn't get something on his on his tie or a shirt or whatever, and I'm 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 pretty good that way. In fact, the other day I was actually wearing a white sweatshirt. I changed before I went to eat. <laughs> I'm just known to spill stuff on my on myself. Maybe I eat too fast that it falls off the fork. I don't know. But anyway, I don't know if this really works. But um, so how can someone so small make such a big mess? And how can now can stains just disappear? So I guess it makes stains disappear. I don't know. All right. And then um, beard oil. Everybody needs beard oil. Well, maybe not everybody, but um, um, anyway, I guess it works okay. Um, I've never tried it, but you know those people who wanted to bring you something from Tulsa? If they have a beard, maybe try some beard oil. Um, you know, I guess you could anoint beard oil. Um, I don't know. I don't know. And then I guess, what does it say, vegan? It's a vegan purse? Why does it say vegan on it? Uh, so this is a purse for guys. Um, um, uh, 
No. I don't know. I guess it, it's a. This is a, the large purse. Um, you can fit your gun in here. About nothing else, pretty much. Um, I guess you. Uh, you can put money in here. So, it's my favorite color, fuchsia. Um, what? Oh, okay. Fuchsia is the color of the year for some of you that don't know. All right. So, so um. So some of you guys need to get some fuchsia shirts and stuff like that, of course. Hey, they were popular back in the 90s, um, maybe late 80s. So anyway, um, this is not a very big purse, um, but it's a, oh, oh, what, what is a bag in a bag mean? Is there another bag in here? Or does that mean this bag and that bag? I don't know. Anyway, we have lots of purses out there. Um, even we do have some gun purses. Of course, you could use this for a gun purse. Um, but uh, Oklahoma, we, we carry guns. Um, and so um, anyway, it's out there if some of you people want to get that. I mean, it really, it's really not for guys. I just want to let you know. But you know, if, if a guy wants to carry it, uh, I guess it can. All right. Well, I guess that's good for announcements. Let's go home. No. Let's go. Oh, I, I do want to let you know about our podcast. Um, you know, I call it Randall's Weekly Podcast. I put an episode about every 10 days because I do it myself. Um, anyway, um, but Tony McKinnon and I, we actually, um, the purpose of the podcast actually is, is to interview Raymond graduates. And, and so far, I mean, we'll probably some interviews some other people you know, because there is other people besides Raymond graduates. But, but the, the real purpose is to showcase our Raymond graduates and what they're doing around the world and various different things. I mean, we, we have uh, interviewed some successful business people, interviewed a lot of pastors, missionaries, um, you know, and this other people. All right. So it's a, um, and Tony and I, we're, we're really serious. Um, that's, that's a joke. Um, we're not very serious. And in fact, we had a comment one time that goes, well, it's not face somewhere of the year, um, which it's not, all right? So um, if, if, you want a, if you want a serious podcast, don't listen to ours, all right? Um, and Anthony, Anthony's the, the, the singing jukebox, all right? Anthony Washington, he, uh, we have him on the program quite a bit, especially if I know that we need some music because Anthony can sing anything. I mean, I'm talking about anything. He, you know, we, we've sung all kinds of different genres on, on the thing. Because Tony and I, we can't sing a lick. I mean, we're not even good at playing the radio. Um, and so, but, you know, we, we have a good time um, on the podcast. And, and now we did have a real serious, um, probably our New, Year's, our New Year's episode was the most serious episode we've, we've ever had. I really was serious and actually prophesied quite a, uh, on that thing. And it, it was it was pretty pretty awesome, and so um, um, wherever you find your podcast, most people go to Apple, but you can Spotify, Podbean, and all kinds of different places. Anywhere you find a podcast, um, our podcast should be available there to listen to. And it's um, uh, I'm surprised how many people actually do listen. To be honest with you, it's it's funny because I had one of the kids, a kid that grew up in my youth group, you know, and um, he's not really listens to a lot of Christian podcasts. Well, so. One week, um, I actually uploaded my, the podcast, and five minutes later, I get a phone call from him. Um, Something's wrong with your podcast. Um, I'm like, I just downloaded this thing. He goes, yeah, you're my favorite podcast. As soon as you download one, I listen to it. I'm like, really? So anyway, and so there was, something happened, and we, I, I had to, it didn't, didn't upload right. So anyway, on that note, it's investment time. Amen. Praise God. Um, once again, we've been telling you the offerings this week are, are going to help this campus. We have, we have many different projects that, w- that we need um, on, on campus. Um, and so one of the things that we need, according to Dad, is, um, is that we need electricity over on this side of, of campus. So we had a, something went out and our, our street lights aren't working. Um, so... Um, what? A uh, lightning hit it. Yeah. So th- they called it act of God, right? I mean, 
we had lightning hit our hit hit our our building or something, and so knocked out that. So we're going to fix that. Um, many different projects going on. That that's what the money's going for. Um, the way I give, the easiest way to give, is I text my gift, and and to do that, you text the number two eight nine five zero, and for this meeting, type in KHM for Kenneth Hagen Ministries. Um, space in the amount, but I found out you don't even have to put a space in there. And if you don't even put KHM in there, they'll, they'll send a, a, a thing telling you, who do you want to give to? So anyway, but um, um, 28950, the first time you do that, they're going to send you what they call a hyperlink. And if you go on their hyperlink and give us your debit card or your credit card, if you so desire, and then after that, any, anywhere in the world, if you text, it'll take it right out of, out of your bank account or right on your credit card if you give it that way. Um, and I've tried it out. I, I've been I've, I've been in all kinds, every country I ever go to, I try out text to give to see if it works. And I haven't been to a country yet that text to give didn't work. So, so it's awesome. You know, you can, you can, you know, wake up two in the morning, um, you know, and give to Rama. So, so it's, um, it's a great way to give. We also, um, you know, you can give online at rhema.org slash give, or you can give the old fashioned way. We have envelopes. All right. Some of you might actually have a thing called a check. Anybody still use checks? All right. Uh, anyone still use checks a lot? I mean, I, I write a couple of checks a year, but my mom still pays everything by checks. I teach a personal finance class, and a lot of our young people didn't know what a check was. They they didn't even know that a check actually existed. All right. Um, and so. There is a thing called a check that you can put in an envelope, all right? If you're, if you're given by check, you can make your check out to Kenneth Hagen Ministries, KHM, or simply Rama, um, and um, you, know, you can do it that way. We actually have kiosks out in the lobby for some people that want to give by a kiosk for whatever reason, you can do that as well. Amen? Well, let, let's hold our offerings up toward the Lord and let's pray. Um, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for another opportunity to give into your kingdom. And we thank you, Father, that every single need of Kenneth Hagen Ministries or Rainbow Bible Training College is met now. But Father God, we thank you as we come in line with God's laws of giving and receiving that each and every need that we have is met now. We thank you that pressed down, shaken together, and running over so, so men give unto our bosom. We thank you, Father, that every need is met. We thank you, Father, for everything you're doing both here and around the world. And we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's just go ahead and wait on the people. We invite you to stand up and worship with us. We love you, Lord. We put our trust in you, Lord. They say this mountain can't be moved. They say these chains will never
blessed to have a Rich and Charles King sing for us. And so we're going to ask them to come back. Wouldn't you want to hear that again? Yeah. And so we're going to have them come back and sing some more and just bless us. Amen. Come on, say, I believe. I believe. Come on, shout again. Say, I believe on you, God. Amen. Well, I tell you that we know the man who can. Do you know him? Hallelujah. Let's sing about it. Glory to God. I can take heart that's broken, make it over again. But I know a man, I know it, who can. Yes, I do. Who can? Come on, sing it. Charles, you know, that's one of my favorites that you do. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Rich got Patrick and Regina. They used to travel in the 
singers and band, and then Cynthia that travels with me out on the road now to help them out there. Didn't they do a great job? Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, that's great. I like, I guess I'm still old school, but I, I like, I like specials before I preach, you know. <laughs> I guess I'm, I, I, I tell people all the time, I tell them I'm not getting old, I'm just mature. That's where Craig got that from. <laughs> He's getting to that age himself. <laughs> Oh, praise the Lord. Man, it's so good. I, I see so many people here and, and coming and seeing people that I haven't seen in a long, long time. It's, it's just great. And then it's great to see so many of our internationals that have got to come. And that, that's, 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 that's really good. Especially the head of our... Rama schools in different parts of the world. I know Pokes is here, and then I saw two of them from uh, the two from India. I don't know where they're sitting at, but uh, they're somewhere here, and it's it's just fantastic. Oh, they're off over here, huh? Okay, all right. You know, this is a great time to get refreshed. In fact, last night that's what we talked about: getting refueled. Uh, the title of the message was, uh, do you have any, any, any gas in your tank? But it's talking about getting refueled and getting, uh, getting refired. Tonight, I just want to talk to you for a few minutes about it's time to renew your vision. You know, having correct vision is very, very uh, uh, necessary in the natural and also in the spiritual. You know... Uh, Many people get a negative outlook on life because they're not looking right. They don't have the right vision. They're too quick to see the problems instead of the possibilities of God. You know, any of you ever had a call from the eye doctor telling you that you need time for a checkup? Or, you know, sometimes they prescribe glasses to correct and improve. Sometimes they say you need a need surgery and you know what I don't even need these these are clear glass <laughs> about three four years ago now I don't know what it was I was starting to have a little vision problems and of course I'd, I'd had to have readers for reading glasses and actually I wore them all the time because I got tired of taking them off and on so I just left them on so I would read and I had, I had cataract surgery and they put in a new lens. That's all, that's all you do when you have cataract. You, that lens, I asked the doctor about it. He said, well, that lens over, over a period of time, sometimes some people's eyes, that lens back there just, it starts to deteriorate and get a gray film on it. And he said, we just take that out and put another lens in there. Well, they put a lens in, they called it a toric lens. And I've got 20-20 vision. I can read without glasses and anything else. They were all surprised. Though, and I said, well, praise the Lord. But my wife likes me to wear these, especially when I'm up here in front of people and for the TV. And she said, anyway, people seen you with them for so, so long, you might as well wear them anyway. So I, <laughs> you see me, if you see me out, out, not up here on the platform. I don't have these on. But, <laughs> but you see, I had to have them if I was going to read to correct my vision. Now I don't have to have them. I got good vision. The reason people have a vision problem sometimes is that they have, they have not renewed their vision. They can't see the possibilities beyond the current situation. Some of you that have have what they call readers, or that Lynette has those, so so they can read. Uh, you have to you start out at one, and then before long you have to get to another. It has to be upgraded so you can continue to read. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I got 25 people that know what I'm talking about <laughs> out of this whole crowd, and I know better than that because I know some of you. <laughs> But the reason that some people get so tired and weary 
in, in ministry and in serving God too. But I'm going to zero in on talking because the 90% of you in this room are in the ministry. If you're not in a pulpit ministry, you're in the ministry of helps. You see, the ministry of helps is as important as a pulpit ministry. Without the ministry of helps, this couldn't be going right now. Without the ministry of helps, we could not be being seen all over the world. Without these cameras and without some people that behind that screen there, there's a room up there and you got directors and all kinds of different people up there doing different things. Back there, you got a, you got a, a sound person that's uh, keeping the sound going, you know, but I, if I want to, I can. But I better turn it back on so everybody can hear. <laughs> but it takes uh, people in the ministry of helps to help. But it takes everybody re renewing their vision all the time. A lot of times people get tired and weary, discouraged, dis depressed because they've lost sight of the vision. You know, like I said, I'm just going to talk to you tonight a little bit. Proverbs 29, 18 in the old King James says, where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law is happy. NLT says, when people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild, but whoever obeys the law is joyful. God's word translation, I like this. Without prophetic vision, people run wild, but blessed are those who follow God's teaching. Now these verses are, verses are talking about following the vision that God has given you. We need to renew our vision in order to continue to do and accomplish what God has called us to do. The Holy Spirit is with us to help us to see our vision clearly and follow the vision that God has for each of us. You know, when you re renew your vision, it helps you to refire refresh refresh all of these go together renew your vision be refreshed be refired it goes together so i talked about one last night it's easier to get people to begin to look at vision after they get refired so that's what we talked about last night you know actually the Israelites lost their vision of what God would, could do for them because the 10 people brought back a report and it caused them to lose their vision. Numbers 13, 25 through 33, after exploring the land for 40 days, the men returned to Moses and Aaron and the whole community of Israel at Kadesh in the wilderness of Pyram. They reported to the whole community what they had seen and showed them the fruit they had taken from the land. This was their report to Moses. We've entered the land you sent us to explore. It's indeed a bountiful country, a land flowing with milk and honey. Here's the kind of fruit it produces. But the people living there are powerful, and their towns are large and fortified. We saw giants there, the descendants of Anak. The Amalekites live in the Negev, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and the Amorites live in the hill country and the Canaanites live along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea and along the Jordan Valley. But Caleb tried to quiet the people as they stood before Moses. Let us go up at once and take the land, he said. We can certainly conquer it. But the other, man who, other men who had explored the land with him disagreed. We can't go up against them. They're stronger than we are. So they spread a bad report about the land among the, the Israelites. The land we travel through and explored will devour anyone who goes to live there. And all the people we saw were huge. Even we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak next to them. We were like grasshoppers. We felt like grasshoppers, and that's what they thought about us. Now, here is 10 spies of the 12 that went in. They come back with this report, and this is, they said, this is our vision. This is what we saw. And they translated that vision to the whole company and they followed that vision instead of following God's vision. God had said, I'm giving you the land. K 
Caleb and Joshua tried to, t to give them the vision that God had. And when they did, they actually, if you read it there and uh, come on, go on down and read it down further, they got so upset at Caleb and Joshua because they were talking about the vision that God had for them that they wanted to stone them. And the Lord had to intervene. You see, these 10 thought more about what they saw than about the vision that God had given them when he said, I'm giving you the land. They talked more about the problems in the land than they did about the vision of the promises of God. They become negative and fearful. And, you know, we can't do it. And they, then they made excuses why God's promises, his vision that he had given to them wasn't possible. You see, you begin to lose your vision when the devil begins to give you thoughts. How does he get, distract you from your vision? By creating visions of distraction to get your attention off of what God has for you. He brings in negative things and all kinds of things. And if, if he can gain control of your thinking, he can get you off of your vision. We must continually stay with what God has given us. The vision that God has given us. The plan, you must, some people might call it. You know, this ministry has been going. Dad was traveling. He, he left that last church, middle of 1949, middle of my third grade year in school. He went into traveling ministry. He was a part of the healing revival from 47 to 58. Then he was a major player in the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship. And you know, he had, he's, this is what God told him to do. First of all, God told him to go teach my people faith. Secondly, God told him to get on the radio or get, and he did that. And then the printed page, and that's what he did. And then he said, there in 73, he said, we're going to start a Bible school. And he looked at me and said, you do it. And so <laughs> I did. And through the years, back, even back in, I remember back, way back, that they, the Lord had told him there, then the Lord, I, I, I left this out, I should have said, the Lord told him back during that time, everybody was getting tents and traveling all over with their tents. And Uncle Doug, my, his oldest brother, he, he was an old trucker and a, he had been in the carnivals and circuses and he said, Kenneth, I, we, I can, I can handle that. I can, I know how to put tents up. I know about setting chairs and platforms and all that stuff. He said, we can get a, we can get a semi. He said, I know, um, I know I've had, I've been in the trucking business. I know the, I know who to go talk to. And then even people come up and say, brother Hagan, Hey, uh, we'll, we'll give money so you can get your tents. And, and he said, no, God told me to stay in the churches. And that's what he did. You see, they, I, I mentioned all that because, see, that was a distraction that would get him off of his vision. And I don't know how many people through the years have tried to tell us that we should do this and we should do that. And I had people get mad at me because I wouldn't start a regular, you know, school for the kids, you know, elementary school and high school. I, I said, that's not what God told us. That's not our vision. Somebody else can do that. And a lot of times, a lot of people see somebody else doing it, something, and they go over and try to get that vision and implement that vision into their, their vision. You can't do that. You've got to stay with your vision. I had, I had an individual, and y'all probably will know when I say what I'm going to say, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, he got mad at me because I would not 
come in and promote his hunger program and put money in his hunger program. He actually got mad at me about it. Well, I, you, you need to help me with this. And so I said, that's not what we do. Now, I'm going to say something here that all of you need to get a hold of. I told you I was going to talk to you tonight. And I'm talking to all of you, but mainly to you ministers. God dealt with me one night. I was praying. And he said, any time that you take your time and money, I don't care if it's a program that I have instituted, but any time you take your time and money and get out of what I have told you to do or your vision, then you're in disobedience. And I've told that to people through the years. But you, you have to keep, if you're not careful, you have to keep renewing your vision because there will be all kinds of distractions and things that will come that will try to pull you off of your vision that you have for God. Now it's getting really quiet in here because I'm not preaching a sermon that you're going to shout about. But I am talking to you tonight about something that will keep you steady and you will reach the ultimate goal by staying with your vision. Thank God for all of the things that other people do. Thank God. But hey, if that's not something that God has got you doing, hey, bless them, but keep on doing what you're doing. Because no... Because God has talked to you about that. That's your vision. Don't try to get into somebody else's vision. Let them do that. You stay where you're at. My dad used to say, he said, and, he, and he used to say this. My, Lynette might remember this. He'd say he'd seen a lot of ministers get out of their calling because they tried to get over into a ministry that God didn't call them to. Hello. I started out preaching when I was a teenager. I, I actually preached when I was 14 at the youth group that uh, the man didn't show up to preach at our youth. We had a youth rally and he didn't show up and they said, what are we going to do? They were all having, you know, as we say down in Texas, they're having conniption fits because they didn't know what to do. Well, I told them, go out there, have the service, sing, do what we're supposed to do. I said, if he hadn't showed up, give it to me. They said, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to preach. <laughs> I think I was 14. And some I said, well, what did you do? Well, I heard my dad preach this sermon. He said, the Lord give it to him. And it's... Uh, Say it, do it, receive it, tell it. Mark 5, 25. Woman with issue of blood. So I just went up there. I didn't, I didn't have no notes. I just read the scripture and just started talking. <laughs> That's what I was for a number of years. I was an evangelist. And then I came back out of the army and got married. And now I'm, I, I was with my father-in-law, the associate pastor. But you see, vision, you have to stay with your vision, what God's got you doing. And then people are talking about, we need to start a church. And Lynette tell you, I'd say, no, no I'm, not, I'm not interested in pastor. I'm not a pastor. And it wasn't until God changed the vision that I changed. You see, you have to know what your vision is. And in Habakkuk 2, we all know that. The Lord answered and said, write the vision, make it plain. You know, I like what it says in the message. Write this. Write that, what you see. Write it in big block letters so you can read it on the run. <laughs> I like that because God, I, I like that. We need to keep our focus on what God has called us to do. Hello? Well, some people try to get involved in what God ain't called them to do. Or hasn't called them to do. Pardon my Texas colloquialism there. But, you know, 
We have a man named here by the name of Harold Pillars. He's been an usher in this church since the first service in 1985, right down there in the old auditorium down there. Now, he's still an usher in this church, right, usher? How many of y'all ever come through the door and Harold said, appreciate you? <laughs> Bunch of you. <laughs> And I was talking to him one time, and I said, Harold, man, you've been, I said, I really appreciate it. He said, Pastor, that's what God told me to do, and that's what I do. And that's the kind of attitude you're going to have to have when God gives you your, your assignment, then you got to stay with your assignment. Sometimes it's not fun. Sometimes it's not easy. You see, God, in this congregation, God has got people and we got ministers and a large majority of you are, but God's got many of you in business and you have a ministry in the workplace. And also he's given you finances to help finance ministry. Hello. Now I'm... Maybe I shouldn't do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'll, I'll take the republic. I'm, that's something. Let me say this to you while you're doing it. Anytime you make a decision, you look at everything you have to do, and when you make that decision, be living to, willing to live with the consequences. I'm very proud of my son-in-law. Now, he can, he can teach and he can minister. But he realizes that's not his, that's not his, wasn't his main calling. But he he's in real estate business, and he just got an award just last week, I think, or for having I forgot how many twenty nine million in sales in the comp the company he's with. He got an award for that, and it, like he said, that's that's his ministry to help ministers also, and I appreciate that, also to support his wife that is, has, is a minister. Hello. Now, I'm not trying to print any flowers on him, but I'm trying to see, to get you to realize that all of us have a vision that God has for us, and we got to learn to follow that. He... he he at, he at first thought maybe it was in the area of ministry and he began to realize that he's better at helping ministry than he is being being the the main person you know i don't uh, I, I i'm sorry don i didn't mean to, i don't want to embarrass you but but uh, it's a perfect example of what i'm trying to get across we all don't we got all have a vision from god but it doesn't necessarily have to be up here on this. Hello. There's Greg Benedict. He's a good teacher in the word and so forth, but he's a manager at a car dealership and he probably has an opportunity to speak more people than I'll ever speak to. And you know, you, you can do a whole lot more one-on-one -on -one than you can from this pulpit sometimes. And I look across the congregation, I see different ones in different walks of life, medical walks of life, different walks. That's a vision that God give us. You see, we need to learn to stay with what the vision that God gave us and do what he has given us the vision to do. I like what Solomon says here in Proverbs 4.20. My child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully, my Don't lose sight of them. That's what happened. People lose sight of the vision that God gave them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart for their life to those who find them and healing to the whole body. If you want to be successful, stay with what God told you to do. Don't get off over here or get off over there or somewhere else. You, you know, there have been several of the singers and band that I told them, okay, 
you, you have a call. If you're going to do, follow that call, you got to get out and do it now because you're not getting any younger. And I'm sitting there looking at one of them. He raised his hand. He can probably remember the, the night I brought him. I took him and him and his wife and set him down and told him. He was a great part of the Raymond Singers and Band. But I knew that he desired to have a traveling ministry. And I said, and I told him, I said, Larry, it's great. We like you and you know, but if you're going to follow what you think that God has you doing, you can't stay here singing. You got to step out and go. <laughs> you see, so many times we're comfortable where we're at. And hey, in his position, I mean, he's with the singers and band. He's getting, he's, he's got a, a good ministry and, 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 and some, and a sal some salary. <laughs> but to step away from that, hey, it's, all he knows is that that's it. But you see, when you step and follow your vision, then the Spirit of God will come in and begin to direct you where you're supposed to go. My friend, Tony Cook, he, I thought it and he thought he's going to be here with me forever. And then the Lord began to deal with him. And he said, the Lord's dealing me to step out. Well, he really didn't have a lot going when he stepped out. He just knew that that's what God was saying to him. But as he stepped out, then that, the vision became clear. And you see where he is today. You know, sort of like the little old boy. He had, he had to go to grandma's house or somebody's house and it was dark and he all he had was his flashlight and he, he, that flashlight just showed him two or three steps at a time but as he followed the vision of that flashlight he got to his destination with your vision that God has given you sometimes you just got to take it one step at a time you don't know where it's going but you see that's what we've got to do. I see my friend Roy Cogshell sitting there. He was working and he kept talking to me over a period of time. He was working as a mechanic at, at the Ford place. And he kept talking about, he felt like he needed to start his own. Finally, I told him, I said, Roy, just go do it. Didn't I, Roy? he really didn't know what was going to happen now he has two of them <laughs> but you see you got to follow the vision that God has for you you can't be hung because this is comfortable some of you and I'm just going to say it this is what God's given me I'm well, a long way off of the notes and I'm just going Son, and the Lord's saying this, and I, I, I don't know who you are. I didn't talk to nobody. But some of you are so comfortable in your ministry that God is trying to give you a greater vision, and you, you, you're too comfortable, and you're afraid to move. Uh, somebody said, well, is that for me? I don't know who it's for. All I know is what I heard. And I just said what I heard, okay? We have to look at our vision not in the natural realm many times the vision we have in the natural it doesn't look like it's feasible we got to see beyond the natural we got to see what God has for us we got to see the possibilities that they're there you know as I was looking at this message and putting it all together and, 
And I'm just sort of skipping through some of it here because God's got me going a different direction. You know, it says here, the Holy Spirit will help us. Actually, John 16, 13, New Living says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, but he will guide you. God's vision for the future comes to you. Now, here we get with the vision for Raymond. I started the school, but I still, I, I went out and I went out almost every weekend somewhere preaching, Lynette will tell you. And whenever, whenever we had said amen at graduation, I had to motor home. Well, first of all, that white Dodge van <laughs> and the kids, I said, Craig looked at me because see, I had lake pipes down the side of that thing. And I had that, is it was 78, I think, Dodge van. Man, that thing was tricked out. And I had, back then, you know, it's normally aspirated with carburetor and you gotta, you gotta get that air intake in the carburetors and, and the fuel just right. Man, you could drive that thing 80 miles an hour all day long and look at them, those pipes would be chalk white. They wasn't black. And that means you got that, you got it set just right. Well, <laughs> we had been running hard for about, six or eight hours to get somewhere to preach and he slid out of that car out of that and he burned i think he still got a scar on the back of his leg he hit that pipe and it burned a hole in his leg you know but man i'd have that thing loaded and we're gone for three months i'm out on the road i come back just in time for school and then we got the motor home but you see that's what i did and i did not want to stop at all and the Lord been dealing with me for about a year and I'm digging my heels in the ground and then besides that dad was talking to me and he said yeah you need to get out there more son I'm gonna st I'll stay I'll stay back you get out well we were in South Africa and my wife, she has always been my, my best supporter. She says she liked to hear me preach better than anybody else back then. And she still says, why don't you preach like you used to? I said, well, baby, that was the evangelist anointing and I can't make it come. <laughs> I, the Lord changed me. The pastors, are, the evangelist anointing, the pastor's anointing, all the anointings are, they're all different. But we were in South Africa and we got back to the hotel and she looked at me and she said, what is the matter with you? You can't preach anymore. <laughs> and she had never done that. <laughs> so I broke down and told her, I said, well, God is dealing with me to start a church. Well, see, you see, that wasn't my vision. I had, I was doing what he told me to do to start with. And the point I'm making is, you see, I was trying to stay where I was comfortable and where I enjoyed. But I said, well, and she said, okay. And then she said, well, I just, because she, she always wanted to pastor. And she said, I just prayed the pastor's heart out and, and I'm comfortable. Now I got to turn around and pray it back in. <laughs> And so I told her when we get home, I gotta, I gotta go talk. I gotta talk to dad. So I got home and I said, dad, we gotta go to lunch. I need to talk to you. He said, yeah, I need to talk to you too. And so we got there and he said, he said, well, which you, you go first. I said, well, dad, the Lord been dealing with me about staying here and, and staying and starting a church. He said, yeah, the Lord told me in this meeting, I got it all wrong. I supposed to stay out here and you supposed to stay here. So you see, I didn't change until I was, I knew God was in it. I was associate pastor. I was going to take that church over. I was fully, I was fully satisfied. That was my vision. In fact, I'd gone and tried out for a couple of churches and I realized, no, this is not it. So I went back. I said, okay, this is where we're at. This is what I'm going to do. Take over this church. Well, next thing you know, 
the Lord began to deal with me and I didn't want to mess with it. And finally, dad called. He had, he had asked, he had said something to me a couple of times, but that's all he just said. And finally, he said, he called and said, and all he said, he called me on the phone and I'd had a, I had a car, I'd had a, I was going to school at Southwestern at that time and because uh, I was associate pastor and we had on a field trip and they, the band rolled over and there I was in the, <laughs> on the bottom of 15 passenger van and everybody was on top of me and my head was on the ground and the, the, that metal bar, it was right here. If it had been here, I wouldn't be here today. And I was all stove up. And so I'm laying there and he called, he just called the phone rang. I picked it up cause the net was at work. And, uh, I said, hello. And he said, son, when are you going to do what? When are you going to obey God? Bye. Hung up. <laughs> that was it. So I had to change plan. Now I'm telling you all this because I want you to realize that you've got to follow his vision. His vision may be here now, but it may change to over here. And you got to be willing to make the change. And that's not fun sometimes. I've never found it to be fun. <laughs> but I always have found it to be rewarding. When I would follow his vision. I'm talking about renewing your vision. Some of you are bound up right now because you keep trying to run with the vision that you, you had here and God is changing your vision and you don't want it. Hello. You know, I just looked back there and saw John Grunewald, John and Michelle. They were very comfortable. They're just being in charge of Raymond Germany and so forth. But then God began to change him more to being able to be over a larger area and over. And I don't know whether he really wanted to do that or not, but, but his vision changed. Looking at many of you through the years, your vision has to change. But some people, and God, the reason the Lord told me to do this, it said some people are so hung on their vision, they will not stop and renew vision because I want them to go another direction. I, get, I got some of you sitting out there. Well, it may be you that I'm talking about. I don't know. Or maybe, maybe, maybe it's hitting home and you're saying, oh, 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 you know. But see, we, he, the Holy Spirit has to be our guide and deal with us on the inside for our vision. Hello? You know, it just came to me. One of my own ushers right here, been usher, I don't know how many years he's been usher. Huh? 21 years. Well, he came to me a few, few years ago and telling me about a plan that somebody had for him and so forth. And I tried to tell him in the nicest way I knew how to, that wasn't what he needed to do. But I finally just said, listen, you're going to have to, you're going to have to figure this out for yourself. Thank God he listened and figured it out and followed God and, or he'd have been in a mess. I don't mean, that. <laughs> but you see, he, he, he's, he's a Raymond grad, but he, he's in the business world. And you see, what I want all of us to realize that God has all a vision for all of us. I don't care what area you're in. I don't care whether it's ministry or whether it's job or whatever. You know, it, it, that's, just, that's just it. You know, Somebody said, well, you're, I'm not, you, you, and this the Lord just started saying this to me. Some people are saying uh, they're not qualified. Do you think I'm qualified to start a school? I went to Bible school 
when I studied theology, I had Strong's theology book and Burkhoff's theology book. I studied church history. I studied uh, Sunday school organization, children's stuff. And I didn't know nothing about, I had no courses on education whatsoever. And now, all of a sudden, I am to develop a Bible school. I'm the most unqualified guy you've ever seen because I'm, I'm really not, I really wasn't a, a real good student. <laughs> because I only like certain subjects and I, the others I just tried to get by in. But God put it on me. Actually, we were, when he said that, we were sitting together and we knew that's the reason that we had left the church with her dad and came here. And I knew that. And I, 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 in fact, she probably might remember, I said, I don't know how to do a school. And then dad didn't say that to me at first. I don't tell the other part, but he said, we got to find somebody to run the school. I didn't tell him God had dealt with me. I sat with him while we interviewed people that had the degrees and everything else to uh, put a school together. And I knew it. Finally, he woke up. (laughs) We're in California. He come and knocked on the motorhome door because we're doing crusade. We've been been out on the road for about three months, I think. We hadn't even been back to Tulsa. He knocked on the door. And it was, I, I think it was, it was in the afternoon. I mean, the church was going to start in a couple of hours, I think. About an hour. About an hour. He knocked on the door. I said, well, what in the world is he doing here? He's, it, church starts in an hour. I served, well, it wasn't church. We was meeting in a, in a uh, arena, uh, auditorium. He said, the Lord just told me you to start, you're supposed to start the school when we get back. In April, and, we, and when, you, when we finish at John Osteen's in April, you off the road and you put the school together and shut the door and walked off. <laughs> Some of you people don't know. Uh, yeah, a lot of people don't really know. They think they know Dad, but they didn't know him really. <laughs> you know, a lot of people think, they say, oh, does he just pray and read the Bible all the time? And I, 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 that's when I was younger. Actually, that's sometimes that was before. Actually, that's when I was in Bible school. And I, just for meanness, I just said, no, nah, you don't have to pray. <laughs> we, we don't have. <laughs> but I don't know why, but some people, for some reason, thought he wasn't a regular person. He was a regular person. He, and we need to all realize we need to be regular people that God uses. Amen. He like... John Wayne Westerns, the old Western, John Wayne, Randolph Scott, uh, Audie Murphy, those guys he liked to play. And he, he liked baseball and football. That's what he liked. That's what he did. And he liked to play doogies. It's a board game. It's actually aggravation. Any of you ever played aggravation? Well, he called it doogies. Anybody ever play doogies with him? I know I was rich over there raising his hand in the net. <laughs> Who raised their hand back there? Who is that? I can't see. Oh, that's Joe. Okay. What you don't know, and they'll tell you this, if he didn't win, you played again. <laughs> you played till he won. And then... If you're winning, he said, you, you're not throwing the dice right. <laughs> I just thought I'd throw that in. Some of y'all might enjoy seeing another side of him <laughs> that you didn't see any time else. Yeah. We, some of you, there's people sitting here that used to be here when we used to get 10,000 letters a day 
and we had lots of people reading letters and so forth and so on. We had we had had we all ate lunch together in the lunchroom in that building over there, and he would go up there and he'd throw spit wads at people. <laughs> anyway, now I got to change my vision. So we changed the vision. I come off the road. We start Rama. In two years, we outgrew where we were at. We started looking for property, and we found that building over there and six acres. And then uh, we got this 50 acres here. Wasn't nothing out here. And we used to play ball out here on this. Uh, Henry Smith sitting right back there. He's a plate on this, up there where this building is. We, we played football up there, didn't we, Henry? And so, you know, now, I've got to talk to the city. i got to talk to all these people. And so I sat down and with an architect. He was one of our board members, Lowell Furry. He had, had an architectural firm in Oklahoma City. And we drew a plot plan. See, it said, write, write the plan. That, that was in 76. We drew a pot plan. And I, 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 I asked them, I called down there where we got all the plans and all that. And I said, see, if, and they couldn't find it. I don't know where that thing, I, I'm going to look for it. So I'm going to try to find it. It's got... Now they're not, it doesn't look like a building. It's just got a square and this building. Where this auditorium sat in 1976, I drew that pot plot plan and where this building sits, it had square there, auditorium. Where every building sits, except those two that was original buildings, where it was on that plot plan. That was, that was in 1976. We moved into this building in 1992. But now you say, well, why are you saying that? Because, hey, sometimes you write the vision, don't try to make it happen, let it happen. I didn't try to make any of it happen. But this whole campus is here, and that will tell you, everywhere where the maintenance building is, where all of the buildings are, they were on that plot plan way back in 76, or most of them anyway. I put the, I put the vision there on that paper. I showed the people in the city. We had a, I had a big meeting, chamber of commerce, mayors, everybody that was anybody. And I told them who we were and what we were going to do. And they sh I showed them the plot plan. And of course, like any city that has, there have been lots of people that come in and they show them all this stuff. And they just sat there and smiled and shook their head, you know. But it wasn't but a few years. And they, somebody told them down the city, Raymond's getting ready to do this. Oh, when's it going to be finished? Because... We started doing what we said we were going to do. Now, what I'm going to tell you here, once you write the vision down and you begin to present it, you better make sure it happens. Oh, some of you looking at me funny. I'm talking to you about vision, renewing your vision. All of you started because you had a plan that God had given you. You need to go back and review that and renew that. Today, we have rainbow schools all over the world. You know, I said it in 1980 that we would have this rainbows all over the world. And a message I preached in St. Louis, Missouri. It's back there in that book called 
how to make the God, how to make the dream God give you true, true, true. See, none of none of my books, I didn't sit down and write them. I preached different messages, just like the one, God the Master Restore. That, that was a that was a four part session. They turned it into three chapters in a book. One of them is called, one of them is called God is a Turnaround Specialist. <laughs> and I said that. It wasn't until about 1999-2000 that we ever had our first one. And then we had, I think, got up to about 14, I think, or so. And then it exploded, and we are where we are today. Now, I talked about me a lot tonight because, you know, I know you don't want me talking about you. <laughs> but everybody in this congregation has a vision that God has given them. I don't care what, your, what profession you're in. I don't care how, min, how big or how small your ministry is. You've got to follow that vision. If you don't want anybody else to see it, at least write it down where you got it. Now, I write down a lot of things on a piece of paper sometimes. I don't even tell anybody about it. And sometimes it's just my own imagination, and sometimes it's God. I used to go to Tony Cook, and I say, Look, Tony, this is this is what I'm thinking, and 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 so forth and so on. And I, cause I'm I'm a visionary. I, I'm I I have trouble putting it down on paper. And I tell Tony, and he he's shaking his head. I tell him what I was seeing. And, and, you know, I'm not talking about a vision where you're seeing things. I'm talking about just on your inner thing. And he. He, a couple, three, four days later, he'd bring me back a detailed report. And then I could present it properly. Don't, don't jump ahead, God is saying, but follow me because I have a plan. Quit trying to make it your plan and let it be my plan. And you'll see that things will turn out a whole lot differently. It's up to you whether the vision is ever implemented or not. It's not up to me. It's up to me to have the power behind to make the vision become a reality. But you yourself must renew your vision and realize that there is change coming and that things will not always be the same. But I will always be there with the vision and the power to make it happen. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory to God. And with that, I'm going to quit because, you know, I learned a long time ago, when God speaks, forget it. Don't try to add nothing to it. Just stop. Anybody get anything out of this at all tonight? I realize this wasn't something that we're going to shout about like we did last night. But I do realize this is something that we all need. And because we have to continue just our vision. Y'all got anything? If you have, come on. Oh, Patrick must have got, he gets stuff all the time when I'm preaching. <laughs> while you were sitting there, uh, while you are standing there ministering, the song that uh, our brother Wayne Stevens wrote in prayer school one year. The words kept coming to me because everything you said tonight really it comes down to a matter of commitment, renewing our commitment. That whatever God wants for us, we'll do it. If he wants us to change and it's within our power to do it, and it is because he wouldn't ask us to do something we couldn't do, right? Right. But, but this, uh, this is how it comes. I give my life to the Master I give my all to Thee, Lord take me, use me in Thy service, my life I freely give, wherever You want me to go, I'll go. Lord, I'll go Whatever you want me to do I'll do 
Yes, Lord, I'll do whatever you want me to say. I'll say, Lord, always my life I freely give. I give my life to the Master. Whatever adjustment I need to make, I'll do it, Lord. I surrender myself completely, Lord, to you. My life I freely give. So wherever you want me to go, I will go. Yes, Lord, I'll go. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do. I gave my life to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Whatever you want me to say, I'll say, Lord, always my life I freely give. Hallelujah. My life I freely give. Hallelujah. Everybody bow your heads. If you... It's not saying that there's anything wrong with you, but... You want to go on record with God tonight. Because you realize... You need to renew your vision. Let me see your hand right now. Just keep it up. Just keep it up. Heavenly Father, as these raise their hands, I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you begin to deal with them. Help them to renew their vision and get a new vision. Thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody stand, please. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I hear the Spirit saying, someone or someones. The Spirit of God is saying, you're contemplating a move. And I'm just going to say it the way 
I'm, I'm seeing it or hearing it. You don't know whether to move or not to move. The Spirit of God is saying, check everything out first. It's not what it looks like. Although you can, could be satisfied there, it's not the right move for you at this moment. Stay put and I'll show you when to move. Hallelujah. That's all I hear. So I'm just going to say what I, I, I learned a long time ago. You don't put any interpretation on it. You just say it. When a word like that goes out sometimes, people try to put a twist to it or an interpretation. No, take it exactly for what it said. And if it's you, you know it. If it's not you, just let it go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 And somebody that's watching, the Lord said, don't stay put, stay put. Stay, stay, stay where you are. This is not the right time. That's all I hear. So if that's you, God bless. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory to God. Now, Lord, what what is that? How do I say that? How do I how do I how do I do that? How do I say that correctly? How do I do that? Let me give me words to say, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Moving with vision can be very unsettling because you don't know the whole plan. So you are hanging back. But nothing is going to fall into place. That's the word I need, yes. Nothing is going to fall into place until you, you make a move that direction. So... Yes, once again, you see, you use faith in all other areas of your life. So now in this area, you have to use your faith, knowing that it was me that spoke knowing that it was me that's giving direction, but don't move too fast. Just stay steady. Yeah, you want it to happen quicker than it's happening. No, stay steady. Yeah, you're on the right track. Your vision is correct. There have been those that have told you that's not the right vision. That's not right. But that's not true. You're on my vision. Stay with my vision and things will be fine. Don't let any distraction keep you from accomplishing. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know what that was all about. Thank you, Jesus. I'm, I'm learning to just, when I step, 
I'm stepping out into more into that area of ministry lately, and I'm learning just to say what I hear of the Spirit and then shut my mouth. And I can hear, I can feel it. People are clamoring, oh, is that me? Does, that, does he mean that me? I don't know who it was for. But you know what? If it was for you, you don't have to question. You, you know exactly what's going on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, anything else you need? Anything else you need? Anything else you need? Go to number my son. Did it? Kiss it to leave more shepherd. Well, praise God. Raise your hands and thank God. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, somebody will go away and say, "Well, we really had a good service last night, and the spirit was really moving tonight." It wasn't. Actually, there might have been more accomplished tonight than there was last night. We have got to quit trying to put God in a box and say, you have, you got to move like this because last night was a great service and we got recharged and refired. But the night he was dealing with us on a serious subject of accomplishing the vision and the will of God for your lives. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. Well, anybody get anything tonight at all? Hallelujah. Thank God. Well, tomorrow's going to be a great day. In the morning, I forget who was who's speaking at the first sessions. I think Karen, Karen Salisbury and uh, Tad, Dean Tad. But at 1030... Miss Denise Hagen Burns is going to be talking, and this girl, she, she's pretty like her mom, but she's her dad made over. I'm sorry, but she is. She's geared the way I'm geared. <laughs> I, she told me I had. She's my executive pastor, and she told me that I'd mellowed too much. <laughs> and then tomorrow night. Craig, our son, Pastor Craig, Pastor Denise, they're uh, they're helping me here. They preaching, they're they're taking some of the load off. I don't have to preach as much. Praise the Lord! I ain't been doing it but 64 years. It's sort of fun to sit back and watch them do it. In fact, so, how many of you are here Sunday morning? You saw them. They, I mean, Denise just got up here and. She'd look down at me and I just told, you know, <laughs> she had it, let her go. And then she called her brother to pray for the sick. And we, we get in all kinds of testimonies of, of instant healing Sunday morning from the healing line. Praise God. You know, this, uh, the, if you want to, she, it's last year, winter Bible, wasn't it? If you want to hear her Last year at Winter Bible, and right at the end, she said people are asking where Raymond's going, and she gives a, a pretty good explanation of what's going to happen. And it, you can see with her and Craig that that the ministry's going to carry on, and I'll talk some more about that tomorrow night. In our, I mean, Thursday night in my message there. What are we supposed to do on Thursday night? Double up our attendance? How can you do that? Double up your offering. It's Raymond night. Yeah. And like Craig said, there's all kinds of things around this campus that needs to be repaired and, and fixed. When a place has been a, here as long as this campus has been here in some of these buildings, stuff starts going bad. I mean, that I, we don't have any idea because that, 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 Lightning, I guess, it struck, hit, and it shorted out underground wires. It knocked out some different kind of things, and we don't even know what it's going to cost to get it fixed. Uh, we know one thing: we got to dig up. A, we got we got to dig dig up a 
because the wire's all underground. I don't know exactly where it is they're going to have to dig up. Huh? Over there in the grass area? Right in front of that? They have to do... Oh, Blake ain't going to like that because they're going to mess up his lawn. <laughs> but uh, they, they, it's underground because all the wire, you notice there's not any wires overhead. Everything's underground. And so they got to get in that conduit and put in new wires and I don't know what all. And, and, and I tell you what, it's not cheap to do anything anymore. Anybody found that out lately? <laughs> Stuff it stuff it used to do it be a hundred dollars is two hundred and fifty dollars. Cameron just finished his racing season. He was was won the championship this year. The right tire, that's a spec tire. Last year it was a hundred and ninety dollars. If you could even get one, it was two hundred and fifty to three hundred and ten dollars for the same tire that was a hundred and ninety dollars last year. <laughs> That's, but we, I don't know how many of y'all are having to repair stuff like we're doing here. We're finding out everything is doubling and tripling in price. So come ready to give on Thursday night for Rhema Day, okay? How many Rhema grants I got in here? How many of you love this campus? How many of you want to see it continue to then bring a big offering? <laughs> All right, tomorrow's going to be a great day, and I'm going to get to relax and just enjoy the services. <laughs> Hallelujah. Shake hand with somebody and say to them, follow your own vision, and it'll be great. God bless. We'll see you all tomorrow.